In a recent video, I compared the Shelly and Sonoff wall panels and demonstrated how to run Home Assistant dashboards on them. Almost every day since then, I've gotten comments on that video saying they're so expensive. Why not use an old Android mobile phone or tablet? You want to know why? It's because these panels are designed to be installed into your wall, flush mounted, and hardwired to mains electricity. A tablet or mobile phone is not. Mounting a tablet on a wall is very difficult. You need to find some sort of case that's compatible with your tablet, and then find a way to connect up and hide the charging cable. Not only that, it's also very bad for a tablet or mobile phone to be connected to the power 24x7, charging constantly. If you're lucky, it will cause your battery to bloat dangerously, and if you're unlucky, it could go into a thermal runaway state, explode, and set fire to your house. I used to use old Android phones and tablets to display some Home Assistant dashboards, and look at them! The battery has puffed up and caused the screen to separate from both of these devices. Thankfully, I got lucky with this, and nothing caught fire. And this is why I use those specially designed wall panels to display my Home Assistant dashboards. But I do agree that sometimes it's handy to have a larger screen to interact with, and I do have a couple of Android tablets around with dashboards displayed on them. One is here on my kitchen counter, and I've got one next to my desk in my office. They're handy to quickly see who's at the door when I'm on a work video call, or to control the lighting scenes or temperature settings in the kitchen. In this video, I'm going to show you how I set them up to display Home Assistant dashboards, and how I limit the risk that they explode or catch fire. Let's take a look! I first started using an Android Home Assistant dashboard in our kitchen. Before that, I used to have a Nest Hub Max in here, but it was an absolutely garbage device, and the longer I use it, the more useless it seemed to become. The smart controls were very limited, and the voice assistant barely worked. I hated it. It did provide some value though, like being able to show our favourite photos on the screen as a screensaver, set timers in the kitchen, and being able to add things to my shopping list. Of course, in a classic Google move, they shut down their shopping list service. When I looked for a replacement, I wanted something that could do all of these things, but also show Home Assistant dashboards, so I could customise them how I liked. I ended up buying a Google Pixel tablet that comes with this cool detachable speaker charging dock thingy. I bought it in some Black Friday sale, but it certainly wasn't cheap. It cost three or four times as much as either the Selly or Sonoff wall panels. But it does look good, the speaker sounds okay, and I love that you're able to cast to it from another Android device. My partner uses it to watch TV shows while she's cooking or eating lunch at our kitchen island. It's also designed to be permanently connected to a power source, and has a feature called battery protection, which prevents it from charging to 100% when it's docked, which should stop the battery from bloating or exploding. Unfortunately though, this feature seems to be slowly rolling out to some Android 15 devices, which is a darn shame, because it would be great for us smart homers if this feature came to older versions of Androids as well. The tablet in my office is a cheap Android tablet that I bought for 100 bucks or so from Amazon. It's not super powerful, but it doesn't have to be, because all it does is show Home Assistant dashboards. Unfortunately, it doesn't support casting videos to it, and it runs Android 13, so it doesn't have that funky battery protection feature. That means I had to get a bit creative to prevent it from exploding and overcharging, which I'll explain later in the video. I 3D printed this neat tablet stand that lets it stand upright, and I bought a right angled USB-C connector so that I can hide the charging cable behind it. I think it looks pretty good sitting here next to me at my office desk. Both of these tablets are running fully kiosk browser, which I downloaded from their website and installed on the tablets. It's basically a web browser, with a bunch of awesome features designed for running dashboards on tablets. You can use it to lock down your device so that it can only show your dashboard, and you can use the front-facing camera to look for motion to turn on the screen when someone walks up to it. It's really cool. Once it's installed, you can swipe in from the left-hand side to bring up its huge variety of settings, and I'll take you through the ones I use most frequently. Firstly, I buy a Plus license, which gives you access to some of the advanced features. It only costs 8 euros, and it's a one-time payment for each device you want to use these features on. It's great value. In the web content menu in settings, I set the start URL to be the full URL of the Home Assistant dashboard I want to display on my device. This is the URL that it will load up each time the application loads. I also enable microphone access so that I can use the Home Assistant voice assistant directly there from the tablet. In the device management area, I make sure that the screen stays on with this setting, 
as I'm going to let fully chaos decide when the screen should turn on and turn off, rather than the operating system. I also enable the feature to launch fully kiosk on boot so that the dashboard displays up automatically whenever the device is restarted. And in the power settings, I turn on the option to prevent the device from going to sleep. In the motion detection menu, which is a premium feature that requires that plus license, I turn on motion detection support and tell it to turn off the screen when the room is dark. I then enable the options to turn on the screen and to turn off the screensaver when motion is detected. And finally, in other settings, I enable the MQTT integration and I type in the URL, username and password for my Mosquito server. This adds the kiosk app and tablet into my Home Assistant, which is really handy as you'll see later. Now, when you reboot your tablet, it should automatically load up onto your chosen dashboard. The screen should turn off when the room goes dark and turn back on again when you walk up to it. If you wanted to, you could install the Home Assistant companion application instead of Fully Kiosk to display your dashboard, but you don't get some of the advanced settings like having it load up automatically on boot or turning off the screen based on motion or darkness. You've now got a tablet that can show any Home Assistant dashboard. I suggest creating a new dashboard specifically designed for your tablet. This lets you customize it perfectly for your screen resolution and the location you end up placing your tablet in. You can create a new dashboard in the Home Assistant settings menu under Dashboards. I'd suggest creating a dashboard from scratch and giving it a memorable name. I usually hide this dashboard from the sidebar as I only load them up from the start URL of Fully Kiosk directly, and therefore I don't want to clutter up my navigation menu with them. Once the dashboard is created, you can click the Open link to start designing it. Click the pencil icon in the top right hand corner and then edit the Home dashboard. I find that using the panel layout here rather than the default sections layout works better for tablets displays and lets me control the layout a bit more. I generally create a column based layout using a horizontal stack card with two vertical stack cards nested inside it. Within those vertical stack cards I arrange my controls with a combination of big controls and buttons that are nested into further horizontal stack cards. I find that big buttons work best as they're harder to mispress, and I try and avoid sliders and other fiddly controls. The tile card is one of my favourites to use here, especially with the optional features you can add to them. The custom mini media player card is also great for controlling media players from the tablet, and you can install it using hacks. I rely heavily on buttons that trigger scenes, as you can control multiple lights from a single button, and it's super easy for guests and visitors to use. Conditional cards are also great here, which let you only show certain dashboard items when certain conditions are met. I talk about those in a lot more detail in a previous video I did about my mobile dashboards, and you should definitely go and check that video out if you've not seen it and want some inspiration. It's linked in the description below. And whilst you're there, I really would appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. I see comments from many people who regularly watch my videos but aren't subscribers. It costs absolutely nothing to subscribe to the channel, and it really helps me out immensely if you do so. So please, click the subscribe button, I'll wait here a second whilst you go do it. For more control, you can also add sub-view dashboards, which are not visible from the top navigation menu. I have one of these set up with more granular lighting controls so I can adjust individual lights if I want to override a scene. I've added a button to my dashboard which you can click on to navigate you to this subview dashboard. You can use the navigate option in the tap behavior area to set this up. Now when you tap on the light control button it takes you to this other view and you can then press the back button in the top left hand corner to take you back to the main view. Finally, I added a button that activates the Home Assistant Voice Assistant, so you can add things to your shopping list or tell it to control other smart devices. This is why I enabled the microphone in my Fully Kiosk settings. Add smart devices to my shopping list. Added smart devices. I unfortunately haven't figured out how to have a tablet respond to a wake word that opens up the HA Voice Assistant. If anyone has any smart ideas about how to do this, please let me know in the comments below. That's how I've set up my Android tablets to show Home Assistant dashboard. The last thing I needed to do was to solve the overcharging issue for the older tablet that doesn't have any of those fancy battery protection features. I noticed that when I added Fully Kiosk to my Home Assistant using MQTT, 
it brought in a bunch of controls and sensors, including one for the battery level. I realised that I could connect the tablet charger to a smart plug and have an automation trigger when the battery falls below 20% or goes above 80%. Each of these triggers has a trigger ID, which I then use to switch off the smart plug if the battery is at 80% or switch on the plug when the battery goes closer to empty. The theory is that this will more closely mimic the normal charging cycle of a tablet and will hopefully prevent the battery from overcharging or exploding. So far it's been working, but I have no idea if my hypothesis is correct. What do you guys think? Any electrical engineers or battery experts out there? Or just anyone with an opinion really? That's what the internet's all about. Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up to let me know. If you're feeling particularly generous and want to support me and the channel, you can also donate to the channel via a super thanks or give a one-off PayPal donation using the links in the description. Donations help me fund the channel and give me motivation to keep going. If you've donated before, I sincerely thank you. Your donations paid for the tablet I used to make this video and the Fully Kiosk Plus license. And lastly, please consider subscribing to the channel so that together we can make your home smarter.